Welcome back to Modern Art Blitz. I'm your host, Matt Gleason. Right now we have a, well, he's been on the scene a long time, because I've known him a long time, and that's how I gauge how long you've been on the scene. And uh, artist and hot rod enthusiast, we're going to get into the many ists of this man. Sean Duffy. Sean, welcome to Modern Art Blitz. Good to see you, Matt. Okay, so, so I wanted to go way back in your career, but you, you just wanted to bring stuff from the last five ten, years, ten years? Ten years. Okay. Ten years. Because I was like, show the Star Trek pieces, and it's like, that's from like, yeah. That's close to 20 yeah. no, years. No Clinton administration yeah. art no, yeah. on this show. Okay, so. No, it, it would have worked, but. Okay, so um, when, I, when I say Sean Duffy, when anybody in the uh, Los Angeles art scene says Sean Duffy, the first thing we think of, in addition to visual art, is music. You, yeah. you have incorporated music into your practice. I hate the word practice, but... No, I like the word practice. You like the word practice? Because <laughs> I'm not good at it. Yeah. I'm just practicing. <laughs> you got to practice It's, like, it. it's okay. taken me years okay. to get so, good at so, it. So, so tell me, um, why music? So in way back, like 30 years ago, I was at UCSD and I was a college DJ, but nobody listened to the station. And so you just got to do anything you wanted. Anything. And, and that was just like the sound exploration it was a crazy art program, like the Antons were there, and, and uh, you know, it was just this total freedom. And, and I kept trying to do it, and I would do kinetic work, and it would break, and, you know, just kept beating my head against the wall. And then kind of record players clicked, and it was, it was during that period when they were almost free. Like, you know, not like now when, you know, you can... You can't find a nice old record player, but on eBay I could just get, and eBay happened, you know. eBay happening was huge. One of the best things to happen yeah. as far as being able to finish that collection off, right? Well, and if you want three 70s era Yamaha turntables, you can get eBay's three. eBay's the place to yeah. do it. Yeah, and okay. before that. Goodwill. Then a quick question, mono or stereo? Uh, stereo. Ooh. Yeah. Sorry. Oh man, these, there's so many vinyl snobs now insisting we have to listen to the mono version. What is the advantage? What are the advantages of stereo? And why did I just spend 150 dollars on a Beatles reissue to get the mono <laughs> version of Sgt. Pepper? Help me out here. Uh, I can't. I'm not, I'm not <laughs> an audiophile in the least. I love. I love that we listen to music like. Like the music that we grew up on, we listened to in horrible car stereos and transistor radios, and it worked. You know, we loved it. It worked. And uh, and like multiple tape dubs of like the old early punk stuff I got would be like fourth or fifth generation tape copy where you hear the hiss and the, the whole. The hi I always assumed yeah. that every hardcore song I heard had had an, somebody in the band was playing the hiss and then I realized yeah it's like you copied it we copied it from the 45 I copied it by the time I got it it was like yeah so yeah. okay. So I don't I don't uh, abide by uh, audiophile standards. I no, just okay like okay so. But not, I like vinyl. I so, love records. So you're an art snob but not a music snob? I'm not really an art <laughs> I'm not snob, not either. snob either. Okay, so I try not. To tell me about this wild looking installation we're kind of in the middle of here. So this was, um, I, I thought of this because it was 10 years ago that I did this, this piece and it's called The Grove. It was um, 18 turntables. Each turntable had 18 speakers that hung over another turntable. And so you'd walk into the space and you could play. Um, I had this collection of, you know, like 200 uh, albums that were just one instrument. So spoken word, guitar, piano, single instrument albums. And you could put one on and eventually as people play different things it would compose something. And it was this kind of crazy interactive mess that was a huge headache, but really fun. And, and that was kind of this moment where, you know, I really felt like I was getting the audience engaged and kind of in there and doing things. And 10 years ago is about when vinyl started coming back. You, yes. could, you could start getting stuff on vinyl outside of having to go to the flea market. Well, right? but that was the dangerous part is like everybody thought their vinyl was worth something. Ugh. So when Ugh. I was stocking the show, it was free, you know. You would go to somebody's grandparents house. And I remember giving boxes. all my vinyl away yeah. finally one day. Just, yep. just you know, I, I remember telling my friend, you can have these three albums if you take all of my albums. <laughs> and it was like, oh, I, there he is, hauling them all out. Now, I mean, like I that. don't know if he made a mint, but everybody thinks that the thing they have is worth yeah. more. That's and, and that's the job of the art dealer, right? Mm -hmm. To say, no, this is the thing that you need to buy. So, yeah. well, let's, let's go on. Let's see what else we got here. Okay. I can't remember. What, what, what else? What? Oh, here we go. Wow. Oh, okay. 
Where are we here? This is Can't Stop It. It was um, a couple years after the Grove, like maybe just one or two. It was at Suzanne Vielmetter's old space uh, on um, Washington. On Washington, the, the it was a one-time dentist office, yes. and I think it's a dentist I office again. I love that space. Yeah, it, it, it was it had such a weird. These cool space. nooks and crannies, yeah. the triangle room, you had know, little rooms. I mean, this is just part of the show. It had these extra rooms. Yeah, and um, I was thinking of this with music because I had wanted to do this piece initially, and this is when vinyl was kind of coming back with the actual album covers. I'm like, I can find, you know. 40 copies of X's Los Angeles, no problem. And then I start looking around, and I'm like, I can't afford that. Oh, no. So and do you do you photograph them, Xerox them, paint I, them? What do you um, do? Photographed them and then silk screened them onto little pieces of 12 by 12 wood and then stacked them like a record store along the wall. Now, last night, X gave a free concert at Pershing Square. Did you go? I did not go. Neither did I. <laughs> We're just bad fans. Yes, We're just yes. terrible, terrible yeah, fans. Yeah, I, I don't know. It's, yeah, I should have, but... But so the, the albums on it were um, X Los Angeles and then the New York Dolls and uh, Madness One Step Beyond and Cream's Goodbye and uh, Dusty Springfield, Dusty in Memphis. So it's kind of this, this Transamerica kind of path. That's like, that's like none of those albums go together. They all do. They all do, though. <laughs> okay, okay. They, somehow they all go they together. They somehow go yeah, together. Yeah, yeah. I, I felt like, you know, you know, as Cream was saying goodbye, you kind of had the New York Dolls coming up, and then at the few minutes later, X was happening in Los Angeles, and and there's this kind of path between okay. them all, and you know, Cream and Dusty Springfield. Oh yeah, yeah all the time. Perfect. Double Bill. Yeah, Perfect. yeah, yeah. At the Royal Albert would, Hall, right? Do you have that album? Definitely <laughs> see that. So, um, and and what year was this? This was, I want to say, 2008. Yeah. Now, yeah. did you ever go into the old Vielmetter space and, and like, because my teeth would hurt because it was a den it had been a dentist <laughs> office and it would be, a, uh, no. Um, no, it was a claustro. It was, I was one of the few artists who absolutely loved it because my sculpture has always been kind of domestic scale. Uh -huh. And so I loved like the little weird rooms yeah. and the, the idea of playing house in a sense. Now, her new space is just is crazy, fantastic. But, yeah, yeah. yeah, And that's also on Washington, yes. just yes. further down the street. Okay. And so, um, what now do, would you sell like each one of these X no, albums? This, no, no, it's a one installation. It's one installation Ooh, boy. and it's in storage. So if anybody <laughs> wants it. We have a good it, price on the. It's, uh, it's a little unruly on how you have to deal with it because it's 32 feet long, I think. It's, oh, geez. It's kind of. Who has a wall? Who has a house that big, yeah. let alone a wall that big? Well, what, now, do musicians, have you ever had musicians encounter the work, uh, your artwork? I had. Um, I did a piece with uh, Devo, and it was uh, the Spider and the Fly, uh, the Rolling Stones song, yeah, yeah. or cover, and it was seven, eight tone arms on one forty-five. Wow! And so it created this cacophony, and then I based all the albums. I used to select albums that went with the turntable. So, the the single was uh, Satisfaction and Spider and the Fly. And so one of the singles that went with it was Devo Satisfaction, which actually sounded phenomenal on it. As, as Cacophony? Yes. With eight? Well, it sounded right. Like, you know, because that ba 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 just got... Wow, it really, yeah, it really it went worked. Off. Wow, wow, wow. Um, and uh, so you worked with Devo on no, that? No, I didn't work with them. They saw it. Uh, I think the guitarist, I can't remember who. And, and they, they all they, yeah. they said, this, you, you have our Devo blessing? Well, I don't know about that. This is not I'll Devo. I'll say that. <laughs> And then, uh, not really a lot of other musicians I've worked with directly. I but just, have, has, have you I, ever gotten any feedback? Not tons. No? I Should mean, be. musicians like it, but it's also, I kind of keep my distance because to me, like, music is like magic. It's, um, I don't understand how to make it at all. So I kind of equate it to how people see art practice. Like, you know, from a distance, it doesn't make any sense. but. When you see a musician playing, it's like it just flows and it drives me nuts. Well, then the alpha audience for your work would probably then be record nerds, yes? Yeah. Okay, so, so do you like get a lot of them? I get quite a few, and I, I get explained to me why things are wrong. <laughs> <laughs> That's too classic. You know, That's a record a nerd. Oh, yeah. Record nerd, oh, yeah. You know, I, I just kind of avoid it. You know, <laughs> so, why now, now uh, b backing up, did you have a formal art education? Yeah. Uh, well, I had a, I, I went to um, UCSD 
majored in art and political science. I double majored. Was that when uh, Alan Capra was there? Yes. Did you have, ever no, have I never a... never took a class with him. You never took a class no, with him? No, but his, like, his influence was huge. Oh, really? I mean, yeah. was it Was Helen and Newton Harrison there Yes, the at Harrisons the time? were there. The Antons, Eleanor and David Anton were there. Wow, the, the Manny couples. Farber was there. Oh, my God. And Did you ever study with Manny Farber? I tried to, and he wouldn't let me in the class. Why not? Because uh, it was a painting class that was full. Oh. And there was me and three other people, and one person had a bicycle to ride back to the office and get a syllabus, and that person got in the class. Oh, <laughs> my God. Wow, man. But, I mean, those are, those are all some big names. Well, who did you yeah. study with there? Anybody memorable? Um, mainly the Antons and, uh, and uh, Faith Ringgold. Um, oh, 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 oh. Yeah. it's only Faith yeah. Ringgold. Holy and, shit. Uh, so did you Yeah, now, it was a good group. Uh, now I look at this and I, I can see, I mean, right away, it looks like a quilt, you know? <laughs> yeah. You no, know? she was, I did a, a advanced class, whatever, upper division with her. Um, and then, but I was going to be a lawyer. I was doing political <laughs> science. <laughs> oh, no. So, so oh. I went to law school briefly and dropped out. Ah. And then I somehow, I applied to UC Irvine and got in. And so you did a master's at UC Irvine? Yeah. Oh, wow. Now, it was, now, now there, that's a very political, you would political yeah. science, but that's, yeah. that's beyond political science. Oh, yeah, That's yeah. political, like, po politics is a religion almost. Well, but that was the advantage of having the political science background. <laughs> um, you know, you could kind of get through it a little easier, and it was, it was a good couple of years. It was, you know, 90 to 92, so a long time ago, right when it, Right when it was overlapping between the cool school, like uh, Craig Kaufman and Tony DeLapp, I think, were still there. Wow. And then Catherine Lord and Daniel Martinez were coming in. Okay, it, okay. It was just this Which of those of, did you study with? Um, I studied a little bit with Daniel, and then, like, Karen Carson was there. Oh, wow. And she's, like, my favorite. Yeah. You know, she was the Very best. good energy. And uh, Catherine Lord was on my thesis committee. She was wonderful. You Ooh, know. That's, that's the first time I ever heard anybody say that about her. You know, <laughs> she, <laughs> wow. she put up with me. So wow, well, okay. I okay, was hey. a little obnoxious. Yeah, that. well, you know, that's what that's the role of kids and students, you know. Yeah. No ma students of all ages. <laughs> and so 90, you were there in 92, so you missed the L.A. riots, right? Um, I was in San Pedro. Ooh, yeah. Geez, wow. <laughs> uh, at the time, I didn't know L.A. well enough to think it wasn't close to L.A., I thought it was like an easy commute into LA from oh, San no. Pedro. Oh, geez. And yeah. I remember um, my parents called to see what was going on. And I'm like, everything's fine. I'm in San Pedro. And, and my sister's like, well, we're watching the news and there's a building on fire. Yeah. And I, <laughs> I open the front curtain and I can see the flames in the distance. And I'm like, oh, yeah, maybe not. right down the street. <laughs> How, how's the dog? Yeah. Um, so, so well, where are you from? Um, uh, East County, San Diego. So it's kind of funny with Michael. Oh, okay. I grew up five miles north of the border. Okay. Um, north of Tecate, Mexico. So okay. my family would go down wow. there and eat dinner. And you ever go to uh, Alpine? Yeah, yeah, I'm really close to Alpine. Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. My my parents live maybe 15 minutes from Alpine. There's a great so. casino in Alpine. That's that's all. That's all <laughs> There's I know. a new casino that my family's boycotting in Hummel now. So why are they boycotting? Because they hate. Hate it. Oh, it's just too too overdeveloped. Yeah. And, oh, uh, okay. You know. Okay. So, so. Um, well, let's move on because we're kind of going year by year here. What do we What okay. do we got next? So this is this was this kind of break. And initially, when I was thinking um, about this work, I was thinking about reactions. And this is around when my father was passing away, um, and he in the '60s was an off-road racer. Um, he's also a superior court judge, which was a weird combination of things. Okay. And so I, I did this piece that was um, a copy of his race car at the Perez Art Museum in Miami. And, and then I did these gas cans that all had speakers in them. And each one, it would play 23 different versions of... Um, uh, California Dreaming, so it kind of overlap. You mean different cover songs the, like yeah, other bands? Covers. Like there's the original Mamas and the Papas, yeah. right? That's and the then, original, right? Yeah. Okay. And then the Carpenters. So the Carpenters and, did it. Uh, Any punk bands? Uh, I didn't use punk bands on no? purpose. It didn't. It, it didn't just work. didn't. It doesn't work. You want you wanted uh, yeah, that dreamy it was, quality. I was going for the dreamy. There Were they like all playing Queen at the same Latifa time? Or they, one. All, they would Queen do Latifa two did. at a time. Yeah. Wow. Wow. California Dreaming. They would they would do two at a time and kind of overlap, but they would. They would try to start at the same moment, and then they would drift apart and get chaotic, and then they would kind of come back together. Well, you know, the, because the, the preacher's in a, the bad guy in that song, you know? Yeah. And I once heard a, a church sermon against 
California that song dreaming. that it was just I very seductive and beautiful, funny. but it was a very evil message. <laughs> and immediately I was like, I ah, great song. I love so, that song. Um, and, what, and what year was this? This was a 2010. Is this at the Perez? Say. Was this, is yeah. this in Soleil at, at the Perez? It, it was at, it was called the Miami Art Museum then. So oh yeah, was, yeah, because yeah. then, oh geez. They changed the name. So, so how, how, was, how was working with them? It was great. Yeah. It was crazy. It was, the, the nuttiest thing is, is I had this Toyota Land Cruiser and had to get it to them and the gallery was perfectly set up, but they had just retiled the whole courtyard. So I had to yank the engine out of it because it was too heavy to go over the courtyard to get into the gallery where it would have been fine. So that was one wow. big headache. Okay. But, um, <laughs> but otherwise, it was a, the, the uh, gas cans wound up in their collection and were up last year, wow. so I'm happy with that's, that. Hey man, that's prestigious and, uh, as, it, as, as prestigious as it gets. Yeah, and was, was, it, was this up during Art Basel? Um, it was not. It was, it was not in yeah. the. the uh, that's that's the window. That's the yeah. window you want. You the want the Perez cans, at December. Yeah, the the gas cans were up um, last year, I think, during our. Basel. Yeah. Does that help with sales? Like, uh, hey, Basil, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Here's not right. your job though, right? Nope. Yeah. Just make the stuff. <laughs> manufacturing stuff. artists, manufacturing only. Tchotchkes let the dealer for rich people. Tchotchkes, well, you know, <laughs> and and they want their tchotchkes. Yeah. So well, let's move on because. Uh, We've got some more cool stuff here. Okay, now I, I, I just want to stop and just say, you know, a little Jason Rhodes influence or not? A little bit, and I have to say, I really hated the Jason Rhodes show at uh, Hazard and Worth. Ooh, I, yeah, okay. I, well, I mean, I wanted to like it, and I'm actually kind of frightening myself because I'm working in that direction yeah. more. And I went in and it was just like, you know, that the first room works, the second room kind of works, and then it just fell apart. Gimmick, gimmick, gimmick. Well, yeah. and it just, it, it felt like fabricators. Like all I could think is, huh, how long did he spend on the phone, yeah. you know, ordering neon signs? Exactly, like, yeah. You know, yeah. it just, it, once you get the hand out of there, and so in thinking back to the show at Rosamund Felsen, the Fierro parts, um, that was a phenomenal show, at least to me at the time. Back in the day, I remember yeah. it just blew everybody yeah. away. Yeah, it was, it was just, and this didn't have a tenth of that energy. Yeah. It just yeah. kind of but we've all kind of absorbed a lot of these visual lessons, don't you think? Yeah, and I also think that, um, that there's something about kind of the commercial side of it that just came through so much. <laughs> well, the, the commercial side can be very seductive, yes. right? Yeah. So, so, so what's so, going on here? So after the Perez show, I had this Land Cruiser with no engine, and I decided I wanted to race it. So it was like this idea of taking a car, making it a sculpture, then making it a race car, then making it a sculpture again. And so I needed to raise money, so Suzanne let me do this show called Garage Sale at the gallery that was um, just the contents of my garage. I just took everything out of my garage, put it in there, and it was all for sale to raise money for the car. And, uh, and it worked. You know, <laughs> I, I wound up racing the car through now, Baja. And so when you sell something at a garage sale in an art context, does that become an art object? I mean, does, you know, I, I does somebody donate your hamper to Mocha? So, well, there was this difficult thing because some of the work in there was my art and it was, you know, like $500, $1,000. And then there'd be something really close to it that was like 50 cents. And <laughs> just like, like an old baseball card and yeah, like, yeah. you know, a gold well, watch. I, I, a friend of mine bought this bottle that I'd painted just as a decoration for around the house for like two dollars and on the side of it I wrote in big letters this is not art. Uh, <laughs> you wanted to decontextualize. Yes, and I'm sure that made it more art. Especially for me. <laughs> it's, it's, it's actually more art than yeah. anything else. It's a, it becomes a dot of stage. Yeah. So, and, um, so what did you do with the car when you bought it? I, I put a new engine in it, uh, fixed a rolled cage, got a uh, what was it? Uh, did a Kickstarter, raised a bunch of money. Um, uh, the CAF and Cola helped out with money. Oh, okay, so that was when you were in the Cola show. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And um, and then I raced it in the Mexican 1000. Which Whoa, you did the Mexican? Of, wow. Yeah. Did you did you complete it? Uh, not technically. Uh oh. I missed. Well, so there's the Baja 1000 and Mexican 1000. Mexican 1000 includes more vintage cars. So it's like you can miss chunks of time, but then the, you just get docked. And so I missed a day 
basically. Oh. But I got to the end. So you didn't so. break down and have to fix it yourself, though. That's I the, did. That's oh, because so that's, yeah. that's the fascinating. That part. was the best part of the story: is watching people deal with fixing cars by the side of the road. Like, like you would be bombing down the road, and then you'd go into some town, and there would be a race car in a welding shop with these guys just welding on it, and then it would be out on the road 10 minutes later. Wow. Because they, they love, uh, Baja loves off-road racing more than anyone. That's, they, that's yeah, basically it. It's phenomenal. Right, and no laws, so. just go crazy? Well, uh, yeah. They're Within laws. reason? Yeah. Okay. So um, did you get like a trophy though, participation yeah. trophy? No? No, no? okay. because I, I miss that, that chunk. You I miss one that chunk. stop point I, I, or yeah, checkpoint. It was only that so. chunk. You know? It's okay. I made it to the end, met Malcolm Smith, you know, everything okay. was good. Well, what's done is done. All so. right. Let's, let's see. No, there's no, no, there's no donuts. Oh. Huh? So this is the last one before the video. Oh, um, okay. So this is, you know, maybe three years ago. Um, and it was kind of, I did a show after this, but it doesn't fit in this conversation. So, um, so, but, but you, you, your next, we're going to show a video that you've done recently. It was yeah. kind of politicized. Or a little bit. Kind of. Yeah. Uh, totally. Little, 100%. Okay. I mean, I feel like, you know, and maybe it's a UC Irvine part of me or the poli sci major. It's like, it's really weird to operate as an artist in today's world. In the so. land of, land of Trump? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> It, it changes everything. The, it's, it's, it's a different world. Yes. Exactly. So um, can, we, uh, can we roll the video? Let's see if it do works. You, do you want us in front of the video, or do you just want to save the video um, here? Let's start. Let's, can we start the video, please? No. Nope, we we, we do have a video, and it is somewhat political. Oh, there it goes. Here we go. That is gorgeous. Do you want to narrate as we go along here? Um, so this is, I, I started thinking of interaction and the way people, um, operate with art and you know in the last five years it's changed it's Facebook and Instagram and we were talking about earlier how you start going to galleries and fewer and fewer people are walking through during the day and and like everybody's just looking at these images and I started playing with Instagram and these nichrome wire um, text pieces uh, because nichrome wire it's I, I had no idea what it was, but it's a, the wire they use for vaping. Oh, wow. So it's this, it, you run a current through it, and it's like in an old heater. The initial ones has tearing apart old heaters and getting the wire, and then I wow. figured out what it was. Um, What's your garage like? Oh, it's a mess. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's, just, totally, it's just the lab. Yeah. Now, is that your studio? Yes. Okay, okay. Yeah. I, I, yeah, I have this three car garage and it's and chaos. What did it burn here now? What was it? Was it on paper? It was on wood. It wow. was on plywood. So it, um, you, you would just run current through it. And then this one, I flipped it over. Uh -huh. So that's why the flames are shooting down. But I thought it. it oh, so you actually had it upside down when you filmed it. Then you yeah. looked like the, like the flames are coming down on us. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Like we're, it, get, it, we're getting it burned. It kind of red like his hair in a way. I felt like it <laughs> had that feel. I think it's it's called a Trump slow hair slow jam. Don't so. get sued. Don't get sued. Now. You know he sues you just for yeah, saying the, yeah. the littlest thing. There, uh, so, um, so and this is recent then, of course. Yeah, this is uh, maybe three months ago, five months ago, something like had, that. Now, have you put this video online? It's everywhere. Or? It's everywhere. Yeah. Okay. This was not I mean, a world premiere. Sorry. No. Sorry. Well, Donald. I I, you know, I put it on Instagram and it existed there, but it doesn't. I kind of love the idea that these videos just kind of float around in the ether and, and you know, I've done a couple other, the burn ones that, that exist in that space and, and just making like this work would be impossible to show in a gallery. It's like, you can't be you burning. Can't, you can't light, you, get, you, can't, yeah. you know what? You can't burn the gallery down, Art. If you get a solo show, okay, my, my idea is I'm gonna create a piece that burns your gallery down. You're right. You know, yeah. Unless exactly. they're heavily insured, and they're yeah. like, ah, oh, this is. Or unless you know. you're, you know, like Chris Burden or somebody. Yeah. Well, probably. yeah, Chris Burden. You know. Yeah. yeah. You and know, people say. At, at a certain level, you can start burning down the gallery. Well, yeah. So, well, you're on your way. <laughs> I hope Towards so. being, I mean, you're in the the the, the Perez. That's great. Perez, so, yeah. so, so, do you have anything uh, coming up? Um, nothing. No. I, I, well, I'm doing. I'm in a group show in Montreal at a gallery called, is it Art Muir? Um, in but, next year so but and, you're repped and and life's yeah. life's good and and you're making no, art and, I, and uh, I have to say the psychology of the last two years have put me in one of those mid-career ruts oh geez well yeah. well it looks like 
Don Don got you out of the rut a little here. Yeah, yeah. So, so. But, you know, the other reason I aired this is because I, I, you know, I'm hoping at least that this will be obsolete in like six weeks, maybe. Yeah. You know, <laughs> I keep thinking every time in the campaign, it's like, oh, he's done. Yeah. He's done. So now it's like you go, oh, he's done. And well, he's not done. So, yeah, no. man, you know. I was one of those people who's like, he will absolutely never be elected. Yeah, I was like, I, I'm, I was in, and now I got told I'm in the bubble. So yeah. I, I, I just gave up. I, I don't know anything because yeah. I'm in a bubble. Yeah. You know, That's I it. just have the echo chamber <laughs> and I'm happy with the echo yeah, chamber. It's right. It's a fun place now, to be. Is the art world an echo chamber? chamber oh yeah it's a huge bubble I mean I think that's why you know not to to blow smoke up your ass but but it's like great that you're doing something like this where it kind of gets out of the the art world you know oh, it's, oh, uh, it's, yeah we it's, want out of that well I mean it's amazing all these resources we have and people won't show their work online and you know there's like three or four interview shows if that yeah you know and it's like the art is kind of missing out. I, I think to myself, what would, what would Andy Warhol do today? Yeah. And he would be all over, you know, YouTube. He'd be uh, streaming live on Dronebox.com. Yeah, just like all Lauren day. <laughs> It'd be 24 hours a day, though, and he would have, you know, a huge, I don't know, balloon party or something. Going you would be on. famous for 15 minutes a day. 15 hours yeah. a day, maybe. Yeah, 15 so, hours. All right, well, Sean Duffy, it's been, I'm, I've always been a fan since the first time I saw your art, um, uh, and, I, and I remain that way. And um, I think, I think the, the rut has passed. I hope so. Okay, what are you doing okay. for the eclipse? Um, I'm going to hang out in my backyard. Yeah, yeah. so we're, we're only going to get like 78% yeah. of it, you know. Yeah. But. I've got a little Trump cartoon I'm doing for it. You're, you're doing a what? <clears throat> a little Trump cartoon. A Trump um, cartoon during yeah. the eclipse? Uh, about the eclipse yeah. that I'm working on. Yeah. All right. It's on Instagram. Well, you can find it. See, you're out of your rut. <laughs> so, Thanks for being our guest on you. Modern Art Blitz. We'll be back right after this.